Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, friends and family from all over the world. I am your host of the show, Jeffrey Hill. Today, I want to introduce you to one of my best friends. His name is Dave Clark. He is a bona fide world traveler with decades of experience meeting people, shaking hands, hugging and kissing the babies, making videos and really feeling and understanding what life is all about. He's a man of incredible wisdom and great depth. He is my friend, Dave Clark. And we'll be right back and introduce you to him after this. Zingo! <laughs> Dear, I am worried. What are you worried about, honey? We have everything we need right here. I'm worried about Toby. Ever since he got his podcast on that one place. What? What one place? TVPBN.com, where he got an instant audience for his podcast. They can listen and view him live at the studio. And become a guest on the show with Jeffrey Hill. I just read that. So, what's the problem? Eh, ever since that... He stands out. Uh, well, well, honey, that's great, dear. I mean, what are you so concerned with? <laughs> You'll see. Oh, yeah. Hey. All right. So, looks pretty good, Mom. So, son, your mother and I were concerned about. Holy fucking sh! What's wrong with this head? <laughs> Love me a good beat. I better move out from too. my desk a bit more. Ladies and gentlemen, in ancient culture, the word friend was synonymous with family. That meant that that friend had the same rights and privileges and respect as someone in your family. To be considered a friend was the, to be considered your brother. And today I want to share with you my friend, 
Dave Clark, who I call that, not lightly, but quite heavily, my friend, right here on the show. Welcome to the show, Dave. Uh, thank you very much, Jeff. As you know, I'm a, I'm a fan of yours. And when you <laughs> introduced me, I, I had to You're my only look fan. But it's okay. Well, no, no, that's not true. You have a lot of viewers all over the world. And uh, when you introduced me, I had to pinch myself. I said, who is he talking about? <laughs> who, who is that person? You know? Well, Gosh, you're thank you so much. Yeah. the pictures on the wall or something. I'm talking about you. Yeah, thank you. you. Going on 10 years. We've shared yep. so many exciting, fun things and times. And yep. it, is, it is miraculous. Rem remember the Invisible Chef? Oh my gosh! Oh, the um, Invisible you know, Chef but, show was good. <laughs> I I have uh, some questions for you, Jeff. You know, I don't As want you to know, point that I'm, out. I don't let anyone come on my show and ask me questions. When they do, I generally turn it around and I ask them a question. Why? It's a matter of trust. I don't I know understand what that. That's why. Ask I, me. Well, today, I, I consider myself a person. Question. Listen, I I appreciate that. It is your show. And the fact that I'm allowed to ask you a question, I mean, that's an honor above and beyond. But my question is about TV PBN. I mean, what inspired you to create this masterpiece? Tell me about that. Well, in order to do that, I think we have to have a little bit of background. Okay. I would think so. Where... We know where it all came from, what the whole thing was in the first place. Right. I, I was, I was, I had moved to Idaho and I went from working for a living doing events in person, live events, you know, you like you, you you're, you're a DJ or you're a, a photographer at a wedding, something like that, in person type of events. And I had moved from San Francisco to Idaho in a market where there were very few of those kind of events happening. And so the money went from, oh, look, we've got lots of money to, oh, my goodness, where's the money? And as a result of that, I, it opened my eyes a little bit. And I, I got out of my shell, which so many people have been forced to do because of the pandemic and COVID. I got out of my shell and I looked around and I said, I need a different way to make money rather than just only showing up at an event and getting paid for that. How can I do something remotely? And this was back in 2010 that I was thinking of this. How can you do something remote? And so then I took a look at the world back then and I said, uh, there doesn't seem to be any major TV networks doing live streams. They just don't seem to be. They were still... That's why you're such an innovator, because you were ahead of the curve. I, I, I think long before a lot of the streaming uh, channels, you were there. And that's why I, I just want to know, how could you have known the future like that? You know? I, my only answer to that is I hear the voices. <laughs> the voices? Yeah. Well, I, I mean, what, yeah. what, I don't have an, an, an answer to how I would know because I just hear the voices and it just sounded like the world's going to change. It's 2010. Congress is forcing broadcasters to go from standard definition television. They had to make a ruling about it. If I recall, it was like some big rule that, that broadcasters were being forced to broadcast in HD no later than 2010. And I'm like, wow, they're so entrenched in their methods and their, their whatever that they had to be forced to make that shift. So it's going to be a while before they feel that they're forced to switch into doing something on a phone so that you could ride around in your car and watch TV. And I was wondering why, why we have these phones. I mean, at the time, my cell phone wasn't that great, right? But still, in Japan, you'd, you'd see people riding on the subway, and they're watching TV on a little tiny box, and then I heard about it happening on some phones and whatever. And I thought, someone has to embrace this. Maybe if I embrace this, maybe if I create like a TV network based on t streaming technology, that somebody would be interested in that. And Ultimately, you continue to inspire people like me. I mean, really, um, because I, I, I remember when people had to go from the little 4x3 thing into the 16x9 and to high def. And what had happened is that a lot of people that are created really great masterpieces, 
They did not embrace the technology, so the masterpiece even today is shelved and cannot be used. But you're an innovator. I mean, you saw it and you did something about that, you know, which I thought was inspiring to me anyway. Um, well, so I created I'm, a lot of channels. A lot of people watched at the peak of that project. We had people watching in 80 different countries. All kinds of channels. We had sports, a sports channel, a theater channel, a music channel. We right. had tens of thousands of music videos of totally unknown, unsigned artists. It was really difficult for us to get you know, major names like you hear about today. So we had just tons of unsigned artists. We had a nature channel. We, had a, we did a project one time back in, the, the, in 2012. The Mayan calendar w made that shift. It, it was supposedly the end of the world in 2012. We all right. know that that was false. I mean, we're still right. here, most of us. And right. I was w the, the network was hired to go to Chichen Itza down in the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico and live stream the end of the world. And so we did. There were a, several million viewers watching TV, PBN, and the end of the world, we were right there on the front line. The major networks, ABS, CBN, C uh, CBS, NBC, whatever, they showed up with their big huge trucks and Mexico, Mexican government told them they're not allowed to go into the Chichen Itza Park. It's a big national park, kind of like going to Yosemite, only in Mexico yeah. it's called Chichen Itza. So the networks weren't allowed to go inside the park for this Mayan calendar, but I, I did something different. I, I don't think the same way everybody does. I walked into the office at the park and I just sat in a chair. And <laughs> one by one, you know, I'm sitting in the lobby just sitting in a chair looking at the wall. And one by one, people were walking in there and, and they start walking up, uh, sir, can, can I do something for you? Oh no, I'm just waiting for permission to come back from Mexico City so I can bring my camera crew into the park. <laughs> I didn't ask anybody for this. I just sat there in the chair and they, and they started asking me questions and I don't know why I thought of doing that, I just did it. I just walked in and sat there and they, they're saying all this stuff and I sat there for what seemed like hours and suddenly a guy walks out with a whole bunch of lanyards in his hand and he says, um, what, what's your name? I said, oh, Jeff Hill, I'm with the Television Public Broadcast Network and he, and he says, oh great, hold on a second, he went back. And I, I waited another 20 or 30 minutes or something. And then he came out with these lanyards again. And he says, here's your access passes. Uh, you have un unrestricted <laughs> access with you and six of your camera crew. And I just was, I've been kind of <laughs> gloating about this now since 2012 because I walk in with my camera crew. We're six, six feet away from, from um, I, forgot, I suddenly forgot the name of the huge giant pyramid the the king or something i can't remember the name of it we're six feet away from the steps and over there on the outside of the park <laughs> over the six eight foot tall rock wall is where all the broadcasters are and they've got their cameras up on the tripods we're streaming live six feet from the bottom of um i wish i can remember the name it means it means king of this massive pyramid for the next three yeah. days of yeah. this celebration it was it was wow. something else and that was one of the the that said to me right then, there is opportunity here because in 2012, we were only one year old. There was opportunity right. because people were watching. I honestly thought when we showed up there, we'd be lucky to get anybody to watch. And it turns out we had over, over 2 million viewers. Well, which brings me up to this. I don't think you, I, I've known you for years and you are so modest. I mean, I don't think you really appreciate your what you have done. You have inspired an awful lot of people, me included. So my question to you, what would you suggest to someone who wants to emulate you? Perhaps not to the degree that you're doing, but what people who, how do you get people involved in, in, in projecting and creating their own way of doing things? What would you suggest? Fear is your personal enemy. If you Fear, wake up yes. in the morning and you think, I want to do this, and then that doubt comes into your mind, things like, mm -hmm. I don't have enough money, uh, I don't have enough time, I'm not smart enough, I don't have those skills, whatever that is, 
those doubts, those are called fear. That's called fear. And all you've done is allow yourself to experience that fear. Back in the 80s, there was a clothing brand called No Fear, and that became my mantra. I said that yeah. to myself, No Fear. When I was in high wow. school, I was afraid of everybody and everything. And wow. one day I said, I can't live this way. How can you live a life of fear? What do you achieve if you wake up in the morning and you allow your self-doubt, those behaviors to restrict you? Do you want to live a life of less? Or would you like to settle <laughs> for more? Wow. I choose to Say, settle for more. And sometimes that means I sacrifice. Go. And I fail. I can't even tell you how much I've failed. I'm tell a me about that. Failure. Jeff, you see, yet, here we failure, are. I think, failure is the great boogaboo, if you know what I mean, in that people are afraid to fail. And they don't understand that people like um, Edison, he failed so many times <laughs> in making a light bulb, you know, but he never gave up. Never, 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 never gave up. Never. Now, how can, do you have a system, do you have a way that people can share, Jeff? Because I'd like to hear about that. Well, we created a product as a result of the Television Public Broadcast Network. It's, it's spawned a lot of different ideas along the way. The pandemic happened and everybody suddenly discovered virtual. They discovered the virtual world. Prior to the pandemic, you know, people have gone online, they've done you know, little, little Facebook lives and, and uh, some people make a really big amount of money on YouTube. But the world at large, their connection to virtual was, let's go home from work and watch Netflix. They're like, yeah, we're, we're virtual. And then they found out in March, April and May of 2020 what virtual really was, where you can actually go home and you can work. And you don't have to see those employees in the office that you're pretending to like. You're home with your family that you love. Hopefully. That's right. <laughs> Some so, people so found tell out about how your much system. they really loved each other. And along the way, they, they spent money on these platforms. They invested their time, their talent, their energies, and their cash into these platforms. And I have a question for all of you out there. How much money did the virtual platforms pay back to you? How much? That's right. It's a good question. So along question. the way, while we're doing virtual stuff, we transitioned just like anybody else. We said, we've got the technology to be virtual. We've been virtual for 10 years. Why don't we take the same technology that we're using right here on the show and connect it into a virtual platform? So we did it with some of the big names and it was exciting and everything, but it kept coming back to me. One of my purposes in life is to help people become better in whatever their endeavor is. Do you want to be a better piano player, a better carpenter, a better bricklayer, maybe a better doctor, a better whatever? Maybe you just need to have an extra paycheck. How many people need an extra paycheck? Wouldn't that be right. amazing if we could figure out a way to use virtual technology to get right. you an extra paycheck? Say like, you know, you get paid 12 months of the year, we'll just figure out a way to get you paid for the 13th. What if we could figure out how to get you paid for the 14th? So every single year you have a 15th paycheck or a 16th. And what if we can do that with technology? There are over 220 million virtual meetings that happen every single week. Or wow. is it month? No, it's every month. Wow. There's like 55 million. This is a statistic that we, that we got from the National Archive Statistics or whatever. The big government place that does all the research on this, right? 55 mm. million meetings happen virtually every single week. If I could figure out a way to take the money that comes in from those meetings, is you gotta pay a company to host your meeting. It's not like all of us have a, you know, a giant hosting company that we run. You gotta pay someone. Someone's making money right. on that. What if right. I could take, say, 50% of the corporate net profit and give it back to the users? Would that make a difference in those users' lives? So with that line of thought, we created a product called ShareRoom. It is a virtual meeting platform, and we all know how those kind of things work. The product is called ShareRoom. And then we created mm -hmm. a little company called Excited. And I'm very excited about Excited. Excited is where you can join up, become an influencer, even just as a customer. If you're just a customer, 
we're going to give you 5% back of other customers. When you refer that customer to us, if that person you refer buys something, we're going to give you 5% back. That's exciting. That's why the company is called Excited. You can go to excited.com <laughs> and, and, and take a look at it yourself. E-X-S-Y-T-E-D.com. And that's what that wow. is. Excited.com will connect you into ShareRoom. And when people use, utilize ShareRoom, if you are one of our members, we're going to give you back money from that to the tune of upwards of 50% of the corporate net profits. Can you imagine in 2020 and 2021, people spent more than $5 billion on virtual meeting. More than $5 billion was earned by these massive companies for virtual meetings. What if I could take that same $5 billion, turn around, and put it back in the pockets of the users? And that is exactly what we're doing. Excellent. I like that idea. So when they want a you virtual know, meeting, maybe they've got a product to demonstrate. Maybe they just need to have a meeting with their mom, their dad, their boss, their next door neighbor. Maybe they want to watch a, a movie with their girlfriend. Maybe it's a virtual birthday party, a virtual wedding. You know how these platforms work. You, everybody joins together and you have a meeting together, right? Rather than going elsewhere, do it on ShareRoom so we can give you money back. Yeah, a lot of my friends are creative people who are writers and so forth. They could use ShareRoom for their own benefit. Huh? To collaborate. And if they can help us bring exactly. more customers, they will make money. Um, I mean, how much is 5% um, of $5 billion? I can't, I can't calculate that much. I, isn't, it like, you know, isn't it like 50 million what, five, or 5 million? I mean, no, that's, not, that's just our basic customer referral percentage, 5%. Wow. That's, that's a lot to be given back. Yep. And you've always been the person who want to share what you do anyway. You know, that's a good thing. Speaking about sharing, mm -hmm. um, I'm going to take a chance and say something. I have used your music in my videos, my nature videos, and I think you play, uh, your music is just incredible. You don't agree with me because I always, always have to beg you for music. So I'm going to ask you a favor. Could I hear a little bit of your music? And how can people get your music for their production? Is that a, is that a, I mean, you know, we didn't well, plan I, I on this. I knew you were going to ask that. So I brought my keyboard down here today. <laughs> we're going to go play oh. a commercial. After the commercial, I'll come back. And I'm going to, I'm going to. Yeah. I'm guessing what you want Good. me to do is just sort of, because I'm not going to play a, a known artist. You mean, you could play Good. the Beethovens, the Mozarts, the whatevers. I'm not going to do that. I'm, I'm, you told me so what you wanted. Chris, so Chris, the producer, talked to you, huh? Because I talked with Chris about that, you know? Um, yes. Yeah. He, he told me that you want me to just invent something off the top of my head in real time. That's right. That's so, right. Excellent. And that's why I say... I can't believe you think this stuff is good because I'm just inventing oh, it see? off the top of my head. But Listen, it may be off the top of your head, but I, I tell you, from my point of view, it's perfect for my videos. Perfect. And I think the audience are going to agree with me. <laughs> but anyway, I know, okay. I know you got to go to commercial, but well, come we'll back and please. And we'll uh -huh. pull my piano out and we'll switch okay. to the stage. And you can t that, uh, people will be able to hear you, but they won't be able to see you. Unless, okay. unless Chris cuts to a full studio wide shot, then they can see you on the TV and stuff like that. But we can talk a little bit that way. So let's go to a commercial. I'm looking we, we'll forward right to back. hearing you. Here, I want you looking to do. We always, I always say poof or zing or something like that to go to a commercial. But today you take, you're in the driver's seat. So how do we go to a commercial today? Well, I don't know. I think it's a, bit, a little bit of... Well, yeah. you have to say something. It's kind of like the, the putting a quarter in the machine. You got to say the right words, like alakababra. Well, kazam. the right words is we'll be right back with Jeffrey Hill and his musical melodies. How's that? <laughs> You need a doctor? 
I am a doctor. I should have died years ago. People all over the world have my disease. I'm here to find a cure. We have to push the boundaries, take the risks. If you're gonna run, do it now. Dr. Michael Morbius, you've been missing for two months. When you're a stranger, then you were found on a container ship that washed up off Long Island. Faces look ugly when you're alone. What did you do to yourself, Doctor? I wish I knew. from dying to being more alive than ever. It worked. Not exactly. I have increased strength and speed and some form of bat radar. What else can I do? There are limits. There has to be. There's something inside of me. Who wants to hunt? Consume blood. Michael. When you're strange, Can you control it? I don't know. Half the city wants to kill you. We haven't had anything this good since that thing in San Francisco. The other half wants to control you. Hey, uh, Dr. Mike, you and I should stay in touch. I'd do anything to save a life. I don't know what I'm capable of. You save lives, you don't take them. Are you here to heal the world? Or to destroy it? Are you mad? I am. I don't. I'm just kidding. It's Dr. Michael Morbius at your service. Here on the show with me, Jeffrey Hill, we are always looking for new people to come on the show as a guest and share their stories. I love to talk to actors, singers, producers, filmmakers, authors, and tons of other people. If you or somebody you know would be a great guest for my show or any other shows on the network, just go to tvpbn.com forward slash the show prep and fill out the application today. I look forward to seeing you. Uh, well, there he is. I'm back, sitting here on both this stage and the other stage at the same time. As soon as we go back to input three, you'll see me. It's a little weird because most of you at home probably realize that I'm sitting in front of a massive green screen. That's why I can be over there and over here at the same time. It's also a Star yeah, for Trek green trick. Screens. I paid Kirk for the privileges of using that. So, what do you want me to play? Thank you. Thank you so much. I want you to be yourself and play what you're inspired to play because you just play originals anyway. So play away. I just watched that Batman trailer. I think that was Batman or whoever it was. And they did this.
Oh my God. That was so beautiful. Imagine, if you will, imagination being the greatest faculty of the mind. Imagine, if you will, my videos with your superb music. <gasps> what a combination. You are wow. so good and you don't even know it. I, I don't know why that is. Why is that? Hey, you make me nervous now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really? I, yeah, I'm, I just was biting my nails. Uh, I don't, I, I well. really... I've said it so many times to you. I don't understand what you think is what you say. I just well, want to. Why. I just want to hear things. I messed it up. Oh, uh, listen. I just wish you would record your stuff more often and send them to me. Stop being the editors. Just play music, send them to me because trust me, I love that. That's, that's yeah. not what I want. I think the audience knows that you're doing this live and that you're there's not rehearsed. You're just doing what comes natural for you, and I think it's beautiful. I, I, I love that song, Silent Night. Yeah. And I've been thinking about how I can play it differently. I don't know. I well, just like it. While, while you're playing that, all I could visualize is a, a nighttime with the street lamps on fresh snow and people walking home and the song is playing in their head as you're playing it. Gorgeous. Snowfall. Snowfall sounds... Snowfall is so quiet, so, so... so I know, so. I know. And that music just sets the mood so well. So well. Wow. Anyway, I, I love to play the piano, but I like, I like chords that are not normal. I like... A little bit of Rockman and off. All right, there we go. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And <laughs> I'm going to go on, on record in asking you for more music, Jeff. So you can't avoid me anymore. You're going to have to comply and send me some music where I can put to my nature videos. How's that? Put you on the spot, did I? <laughs> I suppose I can do that. But we have to go back and sit on my chair because you made me all nervous and now it's... All right. I did. Go sit in your chair then. I'm already sitting I in really my chair. I really appreciate you enjoying the things that I play though. I really appreciate it. Oh, that. I do. 
It, I is, do. it is a big motivation for me to sit down. Because before you, before you said that I play this unique sound, I would just play things and I don't really know why, I would just play stuff. You know, I just hear, I just hear it. A little bit of choir. And I just play something because it, f it feels good. That's right. That's right. Because it feels good. And I appreciate what you play because it's, it is good. And it just makes me happy. I used to sit in front of the piano and cry. Because life doesn't always lead you the direction you want it to go. Sometimes life is difficult. And I would sit in front of the piano and it was the, the opportunity for me to feel angry and just go. <laughs> and then tell I you, feel better. You. I would just yeah, feel there better. There you go. That's just what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. With, with me, when I'm a little depressed or a little out of it, I grab a camera and I walk this, my streets and I have a little trash bag and I pick up the trash along the street with my camera and I just shoot pictures. Therapy for me. And I imagine that your piano is therapy for you. You're a creative person. And you need that, I think. Well, it allows me right? to express what I'm feeling. Because I discovered yeah. that when you think the way I do, you often say things that make people scratch their heads and go, is this guy an idiot? But when I sit in front of the piano, you know how I feel and it's like I can talk. I cannot play the really, 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 really fast, fancy things. But what I can play is the way I feel. That's right. And so it allows right. me to communicate right. that and to express, like, you know, I'm a very religious guy. I want people to know that God lives. And some people will groan when you say that. Whatever. But I'm a fix, spiritual fix guy. I'm a spiritual and guy. I, I, so I, I can relate. I play it and it feels that way. And I, I want to make sure that when I play those church songs, that people can feel that passion. They can feel that faith. And that's what, that's what matters to me. And then you come along you and know, say funny all those thing, things. <laughs> funny thing you should say that, but I have some very good friends who are religious people, and I think they ought to come on your show if for no other reason than to be expressive and say why they are. You They're know, welcome to um, come on the show. I'd, be lo I'd love to talk to them. I, I, I hope they do. I hope they do. Um, you know, I mean... Get away of get a, get out of their their cocoon. You said it best. What prevents a lot of people from doing is that fear, that four letter word, fear. And I think if they can overcome that, you have given them the platform, a way for them to be expressive. And I hope that somehow they'll take you up on your word. And I, the other thing is that I hope that they will take advantage of share room. I mean, really, you know, words are being creative too, you know. People well, we say can talk words about that really creative. quick, but I'm getting the finger, the one that says push the button that goes to the commercials. So we should oh, go okay. to the Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you're so much fun to talk with, though, see? <laughs> it's getting the finger. Off to commercial then. That's what I'm saying. Zip. Ah, 
Ah, yes. Come in. So I have a... Madame Mania knows what you want. Madame Mania knows all? No. Uh, that's great. You want an audience to watch your short films. No, actually, I need... You want to market your successful podcast. No, I, I actually... You want to live stream video games. Actually, I want to be able to do it all at once in front of a live audience. No, 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 I, I want to be able to do it all the time. Mm. You. <gasps> you want to be able to do it all at the same time. Okay, I got it. See, Madam Mayor knows the solution. I'm just kidding. It's Dr. Michael Morbius at your service. On a three, two, one. Go for ignition. July 20th, 1969. That's one small step for man. In school, you were taught that Apollo 11 lost contact with the world for two minutes. Not true. They found something on that day that they kept hidden for 50 years. And now, it's too late to stop. In breaking news, the governor has just ordered the mass evacuation of the entire West Coast. Moving to higher ground is the only possible chance of surviving. Stay away, my brothers and sisters! Stay away! Stay away. This planet has suffered five extinctions. This is going to be the sixth. Are we dead? No, we are just inside the moon. That might be the greatest sentence anyone's ever said. Welcome back, Dave. I can see you're getting your groove on. I am, I am, and I just want to thank you very much for answering my questions. I think you have inspired a lot of people um, in how you created TV PBN by overcoming fear, number one, um, actually anticipating what was going to happen in the future. And a lot of people know, but they don't believe, they don't trust their instincts. And the fact that you put into action what your vision, what your dream was. And I also want to thank you for, for providing the platform that ordinary people can use what they do via your platform. And finally, of course, thank you so much for that beautiful music. I think you're going to find a lot more people agree with me when I say that your music is perfect for my videos. There you have it. I've said it. I'm really it's trying not to be nervous every time you say that. Yeah, even it's on record. I got it's a note record. from the commercial from the producer while we were watching that trailer, Moonfall, and he says, "Stop biting your nails." Uh, and I realized, wow, I, I really am nervous. Well, I just think you have no reason to be nervous because um, well, I don't know when you're going to air this thing, um, but I think you're going to inspire an awful lot of people. 
That's what I think. I hope so. I hope so. Learn from my bad example. But no matter what, never let fear stand in your way. Never let the lack of money stand in your way. I hear that so much. I, they, people say, I could never be in business. I don't have any money. <laughs> well, neither did any business owner when they started their business. They had to figure out how to do it. That's right. You know, no one was That's born right. rich. I mean, people will say, oh, they were born into a rich family, but ultimately that baby didn't come out rich. I think the common denominator is the fact that people who think for themselves, who think outside the box, people you know, like Elon Musk, for example, the man of the year. I mean, he just did it. But nobody, nobody reads about his many failures. That's what I'm, I'm saying. I, I just feel failure is a part of the experience. That's yeah. what I think. It is. It's, it's a required step on the path. Because if you never fail, you never went anywhere. You know, I mean, exactly. just go, go back to a baby. Just think about a baby. Every single one of us in this life have failed at some point. Most of it happened when you were trying to crawl. You just right. don't remember it. You don't remember getting on your knees and trying to stand up and then falling down and smashing your face in the carpet. You don't remember that. But no. you didn't learn to walk in one second. No matter what your wow. mom said, humans <laughs> don't learn to walk in one second. We're not like reindeer that pop out of mom and two seconds later get up and bounce through the forest. Us human beings, we fail from the very first moment we wake up you know, on the day we're born, we can't walk, we can't talk, we can't do anything for ourselves. Right. We have to rely right. on somebody else and then we have to take a chance and start living instead of yep. sitting and doing nothing. Yep. Take a chance and start living. Look at Overcome every single fear. day as an opportunity to fail. And in yep. doing so, you will suddenly discover success. Yeah. Overcome fear. Stop using the excuse, I don't have the money to do it. Expect failure as a learning tool. And of course, watch TV, BBN. Or join and Excited, even better. Join Excited, and then as you're talking to your friends using our virtual platform called Share Room, as you're sharing share your room. life and things in Share Room, you could be making money back. You know, I just remembered somebody. I love this whole topic of success. Back in 1993, I worked in medicine a little bit, and I developed a friendship with the owner of the whole entire chain of urgent care centers. His first name is Satish. Wow. He's an Indian guy. His last name is mm -hmm. Apte, Satish Apte. I never forgot a story he told me, because we're sitting inside of this, this, he owned five different urgent care centers in Northern California. He carried a lot of weight on his shoulders, and there were tons of people who were really critical of this man at the time. He ended up losing the whole entire business. But I never forget what happened and what he said. I was admiring him one day, and I said, how did you get all of this? He said, you know, Jeff, I arrived in America with a nickel. That's all I had. I had one nickel. And I was dumbfounded. How in the world could he have one nickel and turn that one nickel into a multi-million dollar medical chain of urgent care facilities in Northern California? And then everyone criticized him because it failed. But you got to look back at that. This is a man who had a quarter, one nickel in his pocket. He stepped off the boat, fresh off the boat from India knew nothing about American culture, and had a nickel. I don't remember the rest of the story, but I do know that the last time I saw him, he still had a successful neurology practice in Northern California. He was still out there beating the bushes, still living dreams, still working to achieve his goals. Just because one business failed and cost millions of dollars in failure was no reason for him to roll up the carpet and quit. He went on forward, where so many people, they're like, oh, my boyfriend dumped me. Oh, I'm over. My life is finished. I'm never going to try this again. <laughs> oh, my gosh, that girl, she just, she just cheated on me. Oh, whatever the excuses are, get over them. 
get over them. If a man can lose millions of dollars and all we lost was a girlfriend, a boyfriend, someone we love, these things that we let hinder our success, they become debilitating because you allowed it to happen in your mind. It all starts yeah. up here. Never, yeah. ever, yeah. ever let anyone or anything tell you you can't do it because you can. You were designed for greatness. That's what you were made for. And it happened the day you were born and only stops when you choose to stop. So never ah. choose to stop. Choose to go. So failure is no excuse for failing. Because it's a, it's a part stone. of the it's process. Necessary. necessary, yeah. That's right. So That's embrace right. it. Embrace the change. Yeah. I remember Oprah Winfrey talking about that. She was saying, look, everybody see me as a rich person. What they don't see is the amount of time that I have failed. You know? Yeah. And uh, she's right. And, and her little secret, I think, is you really got to know what bridges to cross and what bridges to burn. And I, I think all of us throughout our lives come up against pathways or bridges that we have got to make the decisions based upon our own gut feeling. You know what I mean? So, yeah. yeah. And sometimes uh, when you get to that bridge, you fail because you didn't walk across it. Exactly. Exactly. That's why you, you, you're, you're faced with making that decision. You yeah, failed because doubt. you didn't you walk that across it. stop you. That's right. Jeff, you're a wonderful man. I admire what you have done. And when I grow up, I want to be just like you with TV PPN. Except it's going to be called Microdac. How's that? Microdac is an exciting name. Which brings me <laughs> to my next point here. Make sure that at the end of the show that you make sure you connect with us on Excited. All and right. With that, folks, we'll friends and family at home, today you have met my friend Dave Clark, an extraordinary man a world traveler, and a humble guy, who I call my friend. Like so many of you, we have friends and people we love. I love my friend Dave Clark, and with that, I love you all. Have a Thank you so very much.